This is how to set up one of our genius harnesses on a Bobcat dozer. What I've done is I've taken the block out of the dozer just to make it easier for you to see. If you looked up inside of it though, you're gonna see a block that looks like this. The new ones are a little bit different, but the, the idea how they work is exactly the same. You've got two stacks of solenoids. So this is two in each stack. You'll see other blocks that only have one of these, and that's a single stack, but these are both double stacks. And what that means is each stack has a function. So one function is to turn the blade left and right. The other function is to tilt the blade, angling it to the left or angling it to the right, or tilting it, either way. Okay, so you've got tilt and you've got angle. Those are two very important things to remember with this. Okay, nothing happens. If you don't trigger any of these solenoids, you can put uh, hydraulic pressure to it all you want and nothing's gonna happen. And in fact, that's how this block works. So what has to happen is you turn your hydraulics on and you leave them on. So if you've got, say, a caterpillar, you want to put it into the roller position, roll it, and lock it in that position. Now make sure that you're paying attention very closely to these blocks because there's a P and a T. That's pressure and that's tank. You want to make sure that you've got the pressure going in the right direction. If you have the flow going the wrong way, nothing's going to happen as well. So that's the first thing I always tell people. Make sure you're double checking these and making sure that your pressure is going the right way because Bobcat's backwards to most machines. So Bobcat has the P as being the male coupler on the attachment side, which means on the, it's the female coupler on the machine. Where most other manufacturers by default, the male is the pressure and the female is the return or the tank. So make sure, first of all, you've got your hydraulics going the right direction. Verify it by seeing the P and T here. Make sure you've got the coupler going the right place and then we can get started. So what this has got on, it's got one of their CAN bus controllers. So if you look here, there's seven pins in the control. Okay, this harness travels down to this little black box. This little black box is a computer, okay? And it only talks to a Bobcat. It does not work with any other machine. As of today, there is no adapter available. We have been working a couple years on a controller uh, that, will, that will fool this box, but as of yet, there is nothing. So what we have to do is we have to turn, we have to get rid of all of this if we're gonna run this on another machine on say a 14 pin or an eight pin. For the sake of this video, I'm gonna do a 14 pin, okay? And all of the things that you see here, this is the harness, this has power, this has a, a power ground, and it has a can high and a can low, which is, stands for CAN bus. CAN bus is the technology that they use uh, to communicate with this box. So when you touch a switch in your machine, every time you touch that switch, the, uh, the CAN bus reads that code, and it sends the code down the line. So I'm just going to grab something here. So here's my switches. Every time I touch one of these, okay, the bus of the machine is reading this switch. It's constantly checking. Has he hit the button? Has he hit the button? Yes, he hit the button. Okay, he hit the button. Let's send a signal down this wire. And this com controller says, okay, he hit this button. That means we're going we're gonna to cause one of these wires to fire with 12 volts. Okay, it's much more complicated than what I'm going to show you on our harnesses, but that's how this works. A signal goes down into this box. This box decodes the signal. It then puts 12 volts out on one of these wires, which then triggers the solenoid and causes it to act. Okay, we don't need any of this. This is completely unnecessary for this device. It's something that was added by the manufacturer. It makes it much more difficult for you to adapt attachments over. So that's why we exist. Our job is to get rid of all of this. So we are. When we talk to you about removing things, this is what you're doing. This whole thing, this whole thing can go in the garbage. You do not need this. It is unnecessary. Get rid of it. Gone. Okay, instead, we're going to go back to old school. This is all you need. Okay, we have a harness. This is our 14 pin harness. Okay. Our standard harness has six outputs. The reason we do six outputs is because not everybody's machine has all of the buttons connected. And when they do connect them and they don't have them all connected, they connect different ones. So what this does is this captures all of the different combinations that are possible and allows you to just have one harness that's gonna work. If we had all the different harnesses of all the different things that are possible, we'd have 10 extra SKUs. It would be much more complicated for you. Instead, you just buy this harness. This is our SG-BPH14-6-9DP. What that stands for, it's an SG, which means it's a Skid Steer Genius product. It's a 14, okay, because it's a, sorry, because it has a 14-pin Deutsch on one end. On the other end, it's a 6, so that means it's a dash 6. 
and then it's a dash nine, which means it's nine feet long. And then this is a deep. Now let's talk about the differences here, what the uh, Delphi looks like. These are really easy to see. It's got this little gray rubber thing here and it's got the blue cap. Uh, you'll see that you can look up inside your attachment and you can usually see this little blue cap. So it's really easy to distinguish. got the Deutsch. So these are generally the two choices that we have. Now the Bobcat ones sometimes look a little different. Maybe this is black, but it's really easy to tell this because it's kind of a squared off connector. And they're generally plugged in the side into the solenoid where these Delphi's are actually pigtailed in. So let's go raise the camera up a little bit here. Uh, you can see here they're plugged in like this. Okay. So that's quite obvious how they go together. So now how we do this is generally we take the primary wires, uh, which are my orange and green, and I plug these into one of my stacks here. Okay, so I plug that in here first. And orange and green are generally the two that are used most commonly on all machines. So with these plugged in, I can go back and I can push. They're usually the two left buttons on every stick. Almost every manufacturer does it where these two wires would connect to the C and D pins in here, and that's what it'll be. So once you go and run those and you're happy with the operation of this, maybe this is perfect. Maybe this is the, the angle or whatever, and this is what you want it to do, then you can just leave it. If you're not happy, like maybe it's going the wrong direction for the button that you're pushing, all you have to do is unplug this and put this one over here. So now it completely reverses the direction of the operation. Now, if I don't like that it's here, if I want it to do the other operation, then all I do is I unplug these and I move it over to the other side. And I plug that in. Now I go back into my machine, start it up, turn my hydraulics on, give it a try. If that works and I'm happy with it, then I'm good to go. Now I can move on to my next pair. The next pair are the trickier ones because not all the buttons are installed on every machine. So maybe it's a Caterpillar low flow. If you looked over on your right hand stick, you'd see there's a little spot for two buttons, but there's no buttons actually there. So that's why there's these extra wires here. So you may end up using one of the other pairs or this pair, it all depends. You are gonna have to do trial and error because it can't tell what kind of machine you have when you order, the, when you order these harnesses. So with that said, once you, uh, once you identify which pair are the active ones, I give you an instruction sheet that show you which ones are which, so it's quite easy to distinguish what you have in your machine, and then they align uh, with the colors that you have, uh, then you'll be able to plug that in and get it operational. And that's it, um, it's just that simple. You've got a direct connection to the solenoids. When you push on your buttons inside, your, your buttons are actually activating a little relay or a solid state relay. That puts 12 volts and a ground out on, this, on one of these pins that goes through the wire here, and you get a full circuit because you get the circuit of the 12 volts going in and coming back through the black wire is your ground. And so you get a, a continuous circuit that allows this solenoid to energize, which then pulls up on the, um, the, uh, the valve inside, and then off you go. So that's how easy it is to get a Bobcat dozer up and going using one of our Genius harnesses. This is very similar, this layout is very similar to the snowblower and even the soil condition, there is one extra uh, valve for the soil condition to run in reverse. But the lookout, the general feel of how this works is pretty much the same for most of the Bobcat attachments. So if you have any questions, uh, check the fact page. Also check all our, our other um, videos on our website because we've got lots of good information going up all the time. And if you have any questions, contact us through our site. Thanks very much.